welcome back, literary slummers, to another episode of Hate Read. I'm Em. And I'm Anna. Every fortnight here on Hate Read, one of us challenges the other to read a book that we think she'll hate. This past fortnight, I challenged Em to read this awful book, <laughs> uh, The Amber Room by Steve Barry. So good. Yep. So before we get started, I have to ask Em, did you finish this book? I certainly did. <laughs> and I definitely didn't skim any part of it. No, I read every single word and committed word. them all to memory. Um, yeah, I read this book. It was a book I've now read. I can add it to my list of things I've read. I don't well, know that that's a good thing. And I think you and I both made the same mistake of sitting down and reading it all in one sitting. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I did this yesterday. Um... And it was not a good idea. This is a book that no. if you have to read it, you should do it, like, in very short bursts because... You should read it, like, two chapters at a time and then wait a month to read the next two yes. chapters because inevitably it will recap the thing that you just learned in the last <laughs> oh two chapters. Oh, my God. Thank you for... There were so many times in this book where I was like, this is the same we exact know. paragraph of information you just told me, like, four chapters ago. Why? How stupid do you think I am? Extremely, Did you apparently. forget that you told us this? Like, what's going on? Oh. Is this a thing that Hitler wanted? I don't understand. What is Amber? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> In addition to that issue, this was also very much um, like a death of a thousand cuts situation <laughs> where there wasn't like... <laughs> yes. <laughs> there wasn't like one thing that I was like, man, this book is so sexist. But like, there, like every ist... That you could be, it mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. came up briefly for a sentence, and I was like, "Yikes!" And then we yes. moved on. Yeah. So like, I would feel really bad like saying like, "Oh, hey, this book is fat phobic," because like for the most part, it's not. But there was that one sentence. There was like, that. That was when I texted you. I was like, "Wow, sixteen percent of the way through this book, and we already have so much to discuss." Because <laughs> I read that line, and I was like, "Am I at sixteen percent?" And I checked, and I was. <laughs> Oh, my God. So let's get into it. Oh, okay. Let's. Let's. Have fun summarizing this one. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be rough. Okay. So we start off, as every good book should, with Nazis. (laughs) Hooray. (laughs) Um, We've got this guy named Carol Borea. Ears. Whose nickname is Ears. Who is a Russian, well... Sort of. I think he's just a Russian. Yeah, I don't think he was. Jewish, yeah, but right? he's no. He he was. Um, I think he's just like a prisoner of war or something. Yeah, but but he's he's not from Russia. Oh, he's from. Because that's the whole thing, I right? Know. I don't he's know. He's like dude. probably fuck but... Russia. He's from some other country Belarus? that Russia annexed. Belarus. Yeah. Okay. I think so. I don't know. They threw around so many things in this book, and I just was skimming because I only, I, for a lot of chapters, I just read the dialogue because they were like, let me explain seven pieces of art to you that won't matter at all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, anyway, he's a prisoner of war in Nazi Germany. Um, well, he's in Austria, but whatever. Uh, he's in a concentration camp. He gets pulled out of his hut to go help the Nazis with the situation. The grand Nazi shows up and is like... The grand Nazi. <laughs> he has a name, but whatever. I, don't, I didn't commit to memory either, but oh, like... Oh, I do remember what it is because it, it becomes relevant to a point I want to make later. It's Goring. Okay. So he shows up and he's like, got these four other prisoners with him who are all naked and he makes ears carl boria pour water on them in the freezing cold as a way of torture um because he's trying to get information out of them and ears is like man these prisoner dudes are so cool for standing up to this guy and being so resilient and i respect them so much even though they're still nazis though and they're they're doing this for their fuhrer and right, and they are, in fact, Nazis who are big, big fans of Hitler. <laughs> because, as it turns out, Goring is, like, trying to betray Hitler a little bit, and these guys are, like, loyal to Hitler. 
<laughs> so we're already in this weird position What's where the, these like pro Hitler Nazis. Nazis are like being positioned as like moral authority. What the fuck? What is this? Like, I was also very confused about who I was like, supposed to care about at all in this scene. Like, I um am already pretty sick of media that tries to be like oh, it's a story set in World War II, and this guy's a Nazi, but he's a good Nazi because he has doubts about it. Like, that's already pretty annoying, but these guys don't have doubts about being Nazis. No, they love it. (laughs) They're really into the Nazi thing. They were so into being Nazis that they were willing to die for it. Yes. (laughs) And the, the viewpoint character at this point, Ears, is like, Wow, I respect them so much for this. I will emulate Nazis in this way. I will (laughs) repeatedly say multiple times that this man has saved my life and I owe him forever because he is willing to die. And that's the thing. He's like, oh, I, I, this man saved my life. I was saved by a German. I was saved by this man. And it's like, not really, though, because his point is that the head Nazi is like, oh, if one of you spills the beans, we'll switch you out for one of these prisoners oh and yeah that, and you can pour water on them so it's like technically because these nazis didn't spill the beans ears did survive that one particular day yeah i don't think that counts as saving his life though no like, he but... <laughs> they were all just victims of circumstance here. <laughs> I guess. this was not Jesus. he wasn't like i'll never tell you because i love this prisoner of war he was right. just like, he's not like I he's have, not like, I have a, a, a newfound respect for the sanctity of life, and so I will not trade one life for another, yes. Captain America style. He was like, no, I don't want to reveal, I... <laughs> reveal Hitler's secrets because I love Hitler so much. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying, I don't think Ears needed to have this, like, life debt to this man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He uh, really kind of idolized this one Nazi for no reason. So that was the prologue. <laughs> yep. Cool. Love a prologue. You know Always it's my favorite good. thing in books. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, so it is now the present. Oh, my God. And we are in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, we are introduced to Judge Rachel Cutler, who is... I don't know. Who is here? You know, um, this, you know what her problem is. What? She's just such a prude bitch. If she got laid, she's such an ice queen. If she got laid, she'd be such a nice woman. <laughs> she's such an ice queen and ice princess and frost princess and other synonyms for cold and Ugh. regal. Um, <laughs> but she's she is a judge, and she we are introduced to her in media res. Um, in the middle of a, a trial in which the lawyer for the defense mm-hmm. has called her sir for the fourth time. And she takes offense to this, but realizes because she is cold and calculating almost Sometimes. like a man, but with boobs, um, <laughs> that he, not just a person who's good at their job, but like yeah, a man, like a man, like how a man would do it. Yeah. Like better um, than a woman. <laughs> I don't actually think the phrase like a man is used in this book, but basically all of the, the three main female characters act like guys pretty much, right? Like that's, yes. they're not written like women. Well, they're kind right? of like, well, and especially like the one Monica is at her name. Mm-hmm, she's yeah. like, oh, I think he does like say like, oh, she's just like her dad. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They, you they know, compare, or something like that. Like they compare both her and Suzanne to in, uh, for Mon- in Monica's case, her father, and in Suzanne's case, her older kind of male father, father figure. Yes, uh, they do make those comparisons, but they don't. They don't do that with Rachel. No, they do because they compare her to ears. Oh eyes, well, then ears. never mind. E- ears, 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 <laughs> eyes and ears and mouth and nose. <laughs> One of them. I love oh. Nazis. Here we go. <laughs> That is going to be taken out of context. Please don't, though. No, yeah. Please do not. Please do not take that clip out of the context of this show. Thank you. Um, 
Fuck. <laughs> so, fuck, where are we? So Rachel is a judge, and she's in this scene where this guy disrespects her, but then she calculatingly figures out that he's only doing that so that she'll, like, declare, not declare mistrial, because that's what he wants. Like, so he can use, like, so he can Yeah, he wants as, to, like, like, make her. Make it seem like she's biased. Yeah, yeah. Um, so she's like, never mind, it's fine. And then they have the trial and she's super, super harsh to his defendant, which it's like, that's troubling. But then they try to like justify it by it being like, oh, this is the second time he was arrested and he really assaulted some guy real hard. Like, okay, well still like, it's definitely being portrayed as she is taking out her aggression on this dude for calling her sir on his client, which isn't cool. Yeah. But in any case. Uh, we're introduced to her. We are also introduced to her ex-husband, Paul. Um, wow, Paul. Who is a who's a man, and that's about it. Yep. That's really pretty. The, another me. issue with this book is that most of the characters weren't real characters. They were more like sentient, trivial pursuit pieces. Yes. Um, <laughs> just like said You facts. just move them around the board and you're trying to like They're just put trying to collect facts. In. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes they already have the facts and they just share them and they have absolutely nothing to do with the plot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like the time that um, we got a whole thing about how the one town was named Budweiser and the American beer company didn't like that. And I was like, whatever, <laughs> this doesn't matter to the plot at all, but okay. <laughs> uh, oh my God. So we're introduced to these two chuckle fucks. Um, <laughs> Mr. And Mrs. <laughs> chuckle fuck. <laughs> Mr. And Mrs. Chuckle fuck. Uh, Rachel's father is the Nazi loving Russian prisoner from that first prologue bit. Uh, now free in America. He survived the war. Good for him. Um, and he survived the war only to get got, to get got by another character who we are introduced to around this time, um, whose name? Christian Knoll. Christian Knoll. That's what it was. I wanted to say Christian Bale and I knew that wasn't it. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Now do the Batman voice. Uh, Nope. (laughs) Where's Rachel? (laughs) Where's the Amber Room? <laughs> We're very good Batmans. Um, the way that, that Batman is introduced in this book <laughs> is that he is on a... He he breaks into a man's house, a rich, rich, rich man, um, and then is stealing a Fabergé matchbox from him. Or something. And then that guy comes down and is like, oh, what up? You're stealing my shit. And Christian's like, yeah, and explains how he had the like he I faked guess. his way in there and like pretended to be an art professor <laughs> earlier to scope the place out. And the guy and then murders the guy mm-hmm. and then goes up to that guy's bedroom where that guy had been entertaining a hooker and has sex with the hooker and yeah, then murders what? her. <laughs> Cuz cool. Like why though? <laughs> What did that hooker do? Why was that necessary at all? Well, he couldn't leave any witnesses. I can't describe to, the thing to that you. She hadn't witnessed. <laughs> she was like, "Are you she here to have sex with me?" Room. And he was like, "Yeah." Right. And she even you. this hooker does not act like an actual human woman. She acts like a character from a film noir movie. I don't um, know if at this point in his writing career that Steve that Steve Barry had met a woman yet. Well, he's married. He thanks his wife at the end of the book because oh. that was my my sus my suspicion was that he had recently gotten divorced because it would explain <laughs> a lot in this book. But that's yeah. not the case. He is apparently happily married and remains so, as far as I can tell, to this day. Wow. Um, what a patient. I woman. assume his wife doesn't read his work. I don't know. I. <laughs> When was this published? I think it was like 1998 or something. Nope, 2003. Oh my god, I thought I was thinking 90 was, this whole time. 2003. Yeah. I mean that's like only five years later, but still like I'm pretty sure it was 2003. I know it was early 2000s. We had all survived Y2K at this point, like mm-hmm. yeah. Oh. But here we still were. So we've got Christian Bale. We've got um, the Chuckle Fucks, <laughs> whose dad is a Nazi. No, he's not. It's just, he's he not, just likes them a lot. He just really appreciates their work. Um, oh, with Christian Bale, we also had this whole part where he explains, like, when he's 
everybody just dumps their fucking backstory all over the oh place. Oh my god! When he's dumping irritating. his fucking backstory, he's like, it's like his father was a Nazi, but he's not, and he kind of fell in with the neo Nazis for a bit, but he got out because he just likes like ethnic women too much. I think is the yes! line, something like that. Oh my god! His what? Well, I gotta find this quote. I did highlight it though because I was like, what the fuck did I just read? <laughs> particularly when he found women of color so alluring yeah which is like the weirdest i have black friends moment i've ever read (laughs) it's like well i could have been a neo-nazi but you know i liked fucking like black women okay cool like what (laughs) that's all right i mean can we talk about though really quick just like while we're here like the amount of sex everyone was having through the course of this book it so was unbelievable. Sex. It was so unnecessary. Like, I mean, I hate to be, like, I feel like it, that sounds prudish to be like, and eh, there was too much sex and it was unnecessary, but it was just, like, really random and really, like... And grossly written. Grossly written. That hooker had pyramid-shaped breasts, which I don't know what that means. Like, <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Wow. Yeah. But, so, okay. So we've got Christian Bale. And then we've got Suzanne, Mm -hmm. who is another person similar to Christian Bale, who works... Well, no, actually, I think Monica's introduced first, right? Yeah, Yeah. because he has sex with Monica first. Yeah. So then we've got Monica, who is Monica something or other, who is the daughter of a rich guy named, assumably the same last name that I can't remember for Monica. (laughs) Yep, there it is. Um, Wait, Felmer or Felner? Felner. Fellner, okay. So we've got Monica Fellner and her father, and Monica is, or they are rich, and they employ Christian to go find um, lost art for them. So, like, art that has already been stolen. Um, And that's their whole deal. Now, there is another family called the Loring family, who is also part of this club that is into lost art. And so uh, Ernst Loring has is the like kind of com- like um, Fellner's competitor, and he also has a person on his payroll who acquires art for him, and that is Suzanne. Uh, both Monica and Suzanne are romantically intertwined with Christian because he has sex with everyone, and Monica is like pretty much on Christian's level in terms of like morality where she's like, yeah, kill whoever. I don't give a shit. I just want my fancy art. I would like a Picasso, please go murder some guy. Like that's kind of her hosties. Um, Suzanne, on the other hand, feels vaguely guilty when she must murder, but murder she does. But doesn't think twice about doing it otherwise. (laughs) Yeah, but still does it a lot. (laughs) Um, Cool. Cool. So those are pretty much all of the players. Well, there's a few other ones, but we'll get to them. So, Ears, when he was in the whole Nazi death camp um, deal, during that thing, he overheard one, or one of the questions that Goring, the head Nazi, was asking about was, like, where is this Amber Room? So he's already interested in the Amber Room. And then he's been, like, watching news stories and stuff about the Amber Room and seems, like, really into the Amber Room. But we don't get really his interiority at all, so we don't really know why he's so interested in the Amber Room. Then he gets got. So Christian shows up. <laughs> Christian oh, has it doesn't found... matter. Yes, yeah, so it doesn't matter. Christian has found out about um, this guy from, like, some Soviet records or something that mm-hmm. he just now had access to. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't care. I didn't care, yeah. Um, but anyway, he figures out about that uh, Ears was involved in the Soviet hunt for the Amber Room after World War II. So he, like, worked for the Soviets to recover, or to, like, steal art. Um, and one of the things he was trying to find was the Amber Room. And Christian believes that Ears has some knowledge about the amber room that he hasn't like divulged so he goes to georgia to talk to him the talk goes poorly ears insults him and spits on him because he's a german and ears hates germans except for that one nazi (laughs) and (laughs) so christian um comes back and pushes him like strangles him slash pushes him down the stairs so he breaks his neck 
He says, um, how ironic that my life was saved by a German and now will be ended by a German. Yeah, cool. Like, whatever. This That's <laughs> that's nothing, but whatever. <laughs> uh, Rachel is understandably upset about the death of her father. Um, but she immediately is like, it was murder. And everyone's kind of like, probably not. It seems like he was old and fell down the stairs. And she's like, he survived the Nazis. <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, that... <laughs> but that also has... he was 50 years younger, so... <laughs> right, when that happened. So, like, that has pretty much no relevance here and isn't, <laughs> like, good evidence for anything. But she's, like, pretty convinced. <clears throat> Paul... But never and... does anything to follow up with that, by the way. Like, Well, she does when she goes to fucking Germany. But first we have to talk about how paul um is acting as like the lawyer for the estate uh goes and gets the will and also some letters and also finds some documents about the amber room hidden in um ears's freezer Mm -hmm. which i don't know why that was whatever it doesn't matter um so he gets the will and some letters that ears left for rachel Uh and they are copies of letters that he wrote to his friend who was his co-worker when they were hunting down the amber room which doesn't super make sense why he did that it's never really explained like the explanation they give is like hey because the the conclusion of this letter is please don't look for the amber room yes and then later on someone's like do you think he really didn't want you to look for the Amber Room? Why would he have made copies of that those letters then if that's what he wanted? It's like... Why would he even have brought it up if he didn't want you to know about it? Right, but it's like... But wouldn't a simpler way to get her to look for the Amber Room just be like, please, hey, go look for the Amber yeah, Room? Yeah, please like, take up my life's work. Right, like why... So I don't, I don't really think there's a good explanation for why he copied some of the letters he wrote to this guy. Three of which, them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But whatever. It's it, Why quibble with things like logic at this point? Uh. Um, so uh, we should probably mention what the fucking Amber Room is because oh, yeah. we haven't really explained <laughs> that. <laughs> this might be confusing <laughs> to some people. Uh. Um, so I guess there was, this is a real thing, I guess. Is that, it really? I didn't even yeah, Google it to see yeah, what it Yeah, because like. I didn't Google it. What I did was I read the interview with him at the end of the book, the Ew, author. I, was, and I he was couldn't like, bring myself to do that. He was like, well, he was like, I read, I heard a story on the radio about it. And apparently it's like a big thing in Europe, kind of like a Holy Grail sort of thing. Um, except oh, damn. More modern. I'm looking at pictures of it right now. That's not what I thought it would look like. Oh, really? It, yeah, it looks like gold to me. It looks like a gold room. Well, Amber, I mean, is... I know, but I guess I was picturing, like... Okay, so, like, when they first bring it up, they are like, oh, this guy in, like, 1400s mm-hmm. wanted a room made of Amber. So I was like, okay, so he's, like... I was picturing, like, floor, ceiling, wall, just, like, a cage of Amber. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much what this is, it looks like. I mean, to be fair, this is the, this is the reproduction. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so... Google it, guys. First of all, Google it. <laughs> secondly, <laughs> secondly, okay, so it's it's basically this guy had a bunch of panels of amber made, uh-huh. and he put them all around a room, and everyone was really into it. Like, that's the room. And when all the Nazi stuff went down, it got pushed around back and forth between the Nazis and the non-Nazis, and then it disappeared. Um, and by it, we mean, like, the panels, not, like, the physical room. Right. Right. It, the, 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 all of the decorations for this room. <laughs> they left the room. They took the amber. <laughs> they took the amber, but we're still calling it the amber room because it is enough amber to plaster the whole room. Yes. Okay. So we're all on the same page now. So speaking of pages, where was I? <laughs> uh, did we talk about, oh, so he died and. He died. They found the letters. Yes. Um, so then she goes to Germany. So then she goes to Germany to track down It's like on the an guy. insane whim the day after her father's funeral. Yeah. So she goes to Germany to track down the guy that her father knew um, at the place where he was sending the letters. Uh, in the meantime, Christian shows up in Atlanta. Well, he's already in Atlanta. Sorry, because he killed her dad. But he, sh- he goes to her office and is like trying to talk to her and trying to figure out um, if her dad knew anything and 
blah, 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 talks to a bunch of people, figures out that she has gone to Germany and books a flight to go after him. Suzanne has also showed up in Atlanta following Christian. Um, and she is, she does pretty much the exact same shit, talks to some people, uh, talks to Paul, convinces Paul that Rachel is in trouble, and also books a flight to Germany. And there is some chasing each other through an airport thing between Christian and Suzanne, and no one cares. Um, Which, everybody ends up in Germany. That's the long and short. <laughs> yeah, and, like, so at this point, like, I do want to, like, briefly talk about how easily Paul was, like, tricked into giving this information yes. up to Suzanne. So she's, Everyone like, is, though, to be pre- fair. Huh? Everyone is that stupid, though, to be yes, fair. Yes, that like, is true. They are this stupid. But she's basically, <laughs> like, ambiguously saying well does she or does she straight up say like i'm a private detective she says she's a private investigator from london yes and And then he's like you sound like you're from eastern europe and she's like good ear and i'm like why does any of this matter Uh, (laughs) yeah yeah also that they have a conversation about her accent but like a stranger comes into your office and asks a lot of detailed questions about your ex-wife's travel Mm -hmm. plans in a post 9 11 world, do you give those plans? Do you yes. give up those travel plans at all? Yes. Yep. <laughs> yes. Assuming that I hate my wife. Oh, that, yeah, there is that. I hate my ex <laughs> and I kind of want someone to murder her. <laughs> if they did you bad, okay. I can, that's more fair. Um, but if it was an amicable Paul's split. Paul's playing the long game. And you're hoping to get back together with that person. Maybe yes. this was the long game. Maybe he <laughs> knew all this was going to happen. This was his way back in to Rachel's life. Um, but, like, at the very least, you could be like, hey, can I see your detecting license, please? <laughs> but this is every time anyone should. We mentioned, I think maybe before recording, that. We thought this was going to be like The Da Vinci Code, which is a book that we have done on the show before. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was, but, like, if everyone in The Da Vinci Code just, like, didn't even try to hide their secrets. They were just like, like, yes, I'll tell you immediately, and then I'll probably kill you because I told you. Like, that's a bad... So, like, I understand, like, an author doesn't want to hold up their plot by having all of their characters, like, keep up. Like, there's no other way for Suzanne to know where Rachel is going at this point. So, Paul did have to give up this information, but, like, make it more convincing. Uh, Also disagree. They already introduced the stupid secretary thing. She could have gone to the office and looked in the secretary's book while she was out of the room or something like that. Like, there were other ways that she could have gotten this information. But we needed to raise Paul's suspicions so that he could also fly to Germany and I mean, <laughs> be a fucking idiot over there. I mean, Rachel is like a superior court judge who I'm sure has sent plenty of people to prison who mm-hmm. might yes. have family or other people that are very angry about that. Like, let's just give up all of her private information, you guys. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh, it's so stupid. We also, around this time, get the information that Paul's parents were both killed Ugh. or both died. Well, killed, I guess, yeah. um, in a in a plane crash where a plane blew up <laughs> because everybody assumes because like the Italian some Italian dignitary was on it. Um, but in the letters, it's revealed that actually Paul's father was asking around Italy about the Amber Room at the behest of Rachel's father, and that's. Probably why they got got. Mm -hmm. Um, So that doesn't really super have anything to do with anything. It's just like it gives Paul a motivation a little bit later on. To go to there. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody ends up in Germany. Uh, Rachel is dicking around doing touristy things for some fucking reason. And then Christian Bale shows up and (laughs) fakes a... car accident like he like hires someone to almost run into rachel so that he can save rachel and convince her that he he's like a good dude but then again instead of like this being like like her stranger danger is yes like, it's so bad very off because she and he could have done that and then been like hey 
it seemed like led with the whole like, oh, you're attracted to me. I'm attracted to you. What are you doing around here in Germany? Oh, you're on a quest. That sounds so interesting. Oh, can I come along? Something like that. But instead, he like essentially tells her the entire truth. I've been following you since you left Atlanta. Right. He's like, I've been stalking you and I stalked you to this plane and I stalked you off of the plane. And then I saw you almost get run over. So I saved you. And Rachel, instead of being like, that all sounds very, very suspicious. I don't trust you. Is like, yeah, "Yeah, that all tracks. Okay, cool. I will take you with me on my journey. Well, and then he's like, if you don't go with me willingly, I'm just going to follow you anyway. So she's like, all right, let's share a car. Let's share one singular car. Right, right. And stay at the same hotel at the place we're traveling to 400 kilometers away from this place. And also, I'm not going to, like, call anyone and oh be like, God, hey, this is the situation. Anybody. Oh, my. She's <laughs> so stupid. I wanted her to die. <laughs> she's just like, like, she has the stupid ex. Even even if she's like, it's probably going to be fine. Like, I've been in the situation where I'm like, I meet someone new. I'm like, probably going to f- be fine. They seem cool. I like them. I still 100% every time. Tell a friend their yes. full fucking name so that if I end up murdered, they will know where to look. Oh, my God. I, like, text 10 people every time I get into a lift. Like, I'm like, <laughs> hey, I'm supposed to be home in 10 minutes. If I don't text you back, I'm dead. Here's the license plate of the car I just got into. <laughs> like, it's not even, like, it's not even, like, a preventative measure in terms of, like, I think it will keep me from getting murdered. I just want people to know who murdered me I uh, yeah I want that person to uh be punished for killing me <laughs> so you know <laughs> Rachel's an idiot Rachel is very dumb <laughs> so Rachel and how did she become a judge I don't because know because you know what her her like sense of anything like her intelligence her common sense her reasoning capabilities I'm just like I don't want you to preside over my court case. <laughs> I yeah. don't think you'll make the right decision. <laughs> I think you need to maybe take a step back You here. should step down. <laughs> um, so Rachel and Christian go to visit the friend of Rachel's father. Um, but unbeknownst to them, Suzanne has gotten there first. Suzanne has, even though she left after Christian, Yep. Somehow gotten ahead of them, which I would call bullshit on, except for the whole part where Rachel dicked around and did tours. She, she just hung out day. in Munich for whatever reason. <laughs> so Suzanne gets there first and um, kidnaps a young boy. Oh my God. And, who is this guy's grandson and holds it's him. Very convenient. Uh, yeah. And like uh, basically tells this guy, like, you're going to send them to this cave and tell them that's where the Amber Room is. Um, cool 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 and then she so they so uh christian and um rachel get there talk to the guy he's like go to this cave that's where the amber room is um and, and they were like boy that was easy let's christian do it even kind of kind of points out he's like why the fuck are you telling us this and he's like i don't know i trust I'm you old. guys because i'm old and because your face looks like my friend's face it's like that's a bonkers reason to do something but okay um but of course the real reason is because his grandson is being held hostage um and then suzanne kills that old man because she doesn't want any loose ends and lets the little boy go we find out later so weird weird standard i guess for loose ends here but whatevs yeah not saying i wanted the 10 year old to die but i don't know i wanted some sort of consistency So, I want everyone to die or no one. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, so Christian and, and Rachel go to the cave. Um, and th- there's some suspicious stuff. Things look slightly blown up. Um, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what the deal is. There is no treasure. Uh, Christian then pulls a knife on Rachel. But just as he does so, big explosion. Suzanne has blown up the cave trying to kill both of them i think we need to know also that christian's plan is now i'm going to sexually assault this woman yes in this cave and then kill her with my knife yes (laughs) and mm. (laughs) i mean here's here's the okay christian does this multiple times where he's like i want to have sex with this woman and then kill her 
And those two things are separate. And I'm not saying, like, I, I think it either, again, it, it needs to be all or nothing here. Either he needs to be like, I want to have sex with this woman and then kill her because that's my kink. <laughs> or I want to have sex with this woman and then I probably won't kill her because I'm, uh, like, I just had sex with her. And that's pretty fucked up. Like, to plan I, to kill someone right after having sex with them. It was, he, I think his kink was being in danger, mm-hmm. thinking about art, mm-hmm. and then killing. Like, those were his, that's what got him turned on. Like, all those three things combined together in this cave was almost too much for him to handle. Yeah. And so he just uh, pulled He could that feel knife his out. groin coming to attention. He whipped it out, that knife. Uh, I'm going to see how many times they use the word groin in this book. Too many. Um, so oh, you're right. the cave blows up. Um, by this point, Paul has made his way to Germany, has made his way to this small town where the friend was, has found out that there has been a murder of the guy, and he's like, oh shit, goes to the crime scene, and the police officer in charge of the crime scene is just like sure you can go in and look uh yeah okay Europol, i guess is europol th- like i know interpol is a thing let me I, let me google this real quick it's right not now. europol they he does say what he is because he compares it to the fbi at one mm-hmm. point um he also has a great oh yeah name i guess europol is a thing his name is fritz panic which is a really good name <laughs> Um, I do like that name, but I know, right? wasted on this character. <laughs> totally wasted. Um, so, Paul is worried about his wife. He, ex-wife, sorry, finds out that there's been an explosion and that there was an American woman who was pulled out of the explosion. And he's like, who was it? Who was it? And the police officer is like, Fritz Panic is like, oh, uh, let me ask him. And they're like, it was Rachel. Except they say it in, like, German. Um Yeah. Frau Cutler. Yeah. And so he goes and meets up with her. So they're, you know, adventuring together now. Uh, Christian has also made it out alive, unbeknownst to, like, everyone, I think, at first. But then everybody figures it out once he continues to murder people. Um, And Rachel tells no one that he pulled a knife on her. Yeah. She's, like, going to keep this one under wraps. For what reason? Not clear. I didn't Uh, want anyone to worry. (laughs) But it's like, well, they... They wouldn't have because this is a thing that happened a while ago. It's not like if I was like, oh, um, I tripped and fell on the sidewalk earlier. You wouldn't be like, oh, my gosh. I'm so worried that you're going to trip and fall. Like, it's <laughs> yeah. like, well, it, this already happened. <laughs> like, that's OK. So, <laughs> Do we, oh. we just need to keep you inside from now on? <laughs> right. Rachel and Paul hear about, or they don't hear about, it was in her dad's newspaper clippings that were in the freezer for whatever reason. Uh, (laughs) It's where Um, I keep all my favorite articles. (laughs) But so they, they read about this whole thing with this guy named McKay who was excavating this cave because he thinks there's some Nazi treasure there. So they go there because they're like, Maybe he knows about the Amber Room because our because ear because dad kept the clippings about the Amber Room all together and this clipping I think that was the like logical leap was it was like oh it was all stuff about the Amber Room so there must be a connection. I, I don't know, whatever. I don't know. They were like he's the only one that's digging looking for art in in the mountains here, so he must know something about the Amber Room. Right. Okay. So they they go there. And he's, and they're like, hey, um, we're looking for the Amber Room. Just all and casual. Like, like, people have been like, trying to kill them for this information. And they're like, right, hi, right. we're the Cutlers. We're here about that Amber Room. <laughs> <laughs> and McKay is like, cool, you guys can join my expedition, I guess. <laughs> yeah, he's like, come on in. I'm welcoming you into the fold. You're now my lawyer and my lawyer's judge. <laughs> <laughs> I will consult you on all legal matters. Um, so he, just as they're like having this discussion with McKay, someone runs into the room and is like, we made it. We broke through. We are into the secret chamber where we think all the shit is. 
And he's like, come on, guys, let's all go look at this together. We're best friends, I guess. Let's go, gang. Let's go, gang. We're a well-established gang. Uh, my oldest friends. Um, so, Ice Queen and what's his name? So, so McKay, the chuckle fucks, and this doctor, who, doctor of, like, PhD type doctor, not, like, medical doctor, yeah. I'll go, who's on the payroll. I'll go into the chamber together and it's like three big old trucks and they're like, there's going to be so much art on these trucks. And then they go and look in the <laughs> trucks and there's no art in the trucks. There's also a few dead bodies uh-huh, um, uh-huh. and the letters spelled out next to one. <laughs> this is the dumbest fucking thing. <laughs> next to one of the dead bodies. O, I, and C. Yep. With oh, some spaces in between. Um, and then the doctor, like, like Paul, I think sees him. Yeah. Paul watches him do this like straight up. He's just like, like erase oh. those letters after taking pictures of them and like, doesn't say anything. He's just like, mm, okay. Yeah. Um, the doctor we find out, uh, is working for Suzanne who, well, Suzanne and, um, Loring, um, and took all the pictures Or, like, erase that thing because they don't want any proof that anybody was in the cave post-war. So they want it to seem like those guys who were dead in the cave were there from World War II. Mm -hmm. Um, But Paul has found little ID cards on these guys. Yeah, he just, like, fucking picks up a wallet. This is mine now. (laughs) and, And they say, like... Um, these ID cards were issued after World War II. And Paul's like, <laughs> That's what uh-huh. it says. Straight up. <laughs> Pretty much that. <laughs> Except it's in German, so they have to translate it. Uh- <laughs> yeah, they had to go get a dictionary. So they're like, huh, weird. This treasure that was supposed to be, like these trucks that were like World War II trucks were there and there was no treasure and there, there there were these dead bodies from after World War II. It's almost like someone showed up after World War II and stole some shit and they figure out that the doctor is like double crossing them and whatever. Um, and they also figure out that those letters <laughs> oh I see with spaces in between <laughs> if you add an L before the O, an R before the I and an N before the C and then turn the C into a G <laughs> it would spell Loring which okay so what <laughs> this is a huge leap first this is all. a huge leap in many ways <laughs> for them a correct make, one but also like what? it was a huge leap for them to make and it was a huge leap for this dead guy to have done in the first place because why <laughs> how did the why other did he okay do so that? assumably he wrote the whole name Okay. But how did the other letters get wiped perfectly, away? Perfectly. Perfectly. Except for perfectly. that CG situation. Yes. But G, also, like, that's only a tiny bit of G to get erased. Right. Like, <laughs> Either that or this dead guy only wrote O-I-C oh, with the spaces in between it like some sort of stupid fucking crossword puzzle and was like, <laughs> eh, they'll figure it out. They'll know who killed me. We're good. In 50 years, it will all become clear. <laughs> But also, 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 I would like to point out <laughs> that we have already been introduced to a different character in this book who the same fucking logic could apply to because that Nazi guy who was the head Nazi was named Goring. Very true. I did not even think of that. <laughs> he did have an umlaut over the O. But, but like, if we're going to go a with C and can G turn the into a G. Letters, Literally the same amount of <laughs> leaping to make it to Goring from OIC. Oh, man. But anyway, everybody figures out that these dead guys are somehow connected to Loring, who they, they are aware of because um, his father worked for the Nazis. No, the communists. Both. Both. I think. And was a capitalist and collected art. Um And his name has shown up a few times in, like, articles Articles. about the Amber Room. Who knows? So. (laughs) It's all, like, these are just such loose threads, Mm -hmm. but the author has repeated them so many times 
in this book that you ha- like every character individually has, has to learn these this. things. They yes, all have and, to discover this. And we have to read the whole explanation every Each time. time. Every time. Every single time. It'll be like uh, Christian Bale figures out a thing and explains it in depth and goes into the whole art history of it. And then like two chapters later, Rachel figures out the same thing and goes into the whole art history of it. Because that's the mm. other thing. Everybody in this cares so deeply about art except for Rachel. Like Paul yes. is like on the board at a museum and mm. knows all the art history and was an art history minor before he became or major before he became a lawyer. Mm-hmm. Um, why? Why? Yeah. <laughs> why? <laughs> Just why? Why did you do this to us? Um, it's like, yeah, and so the author like gives us no choice but to accept that this is the only way that this could fold out because it just. I thought that was going to be the big reveal at the end. Was like, actually, no, guys, it went in a whole other direction. Right. This, I was just I trying thought, really hard to MacGuffin you. <laughs> I thought for sure what was going to happen because okay, so in the letter that um her dad leaves her, he's like, remember the myth of I can't remember the name. Remember this myth. It is um, an important myth yeah. for you to remember. And the myth is the one about, like, Helios's son, who he gives the um, sun chariot to, and then he fucks it up and dies, and everyone cries about it. It's, like, that myth. So Rachel interprets that as, um, don't go looking for the Amber Room, like, don't go chasing waterfalls. Um, but... My thought, I thought what was going to happen because Paul looked the myth up and was like, oh, he crashed near this river and everyone cried amber tears into it. And I was like, oh, the amber room is by that yeah. river. Like, that's where it is. It's a code. Mm-hmm. This whole thing is a code that the dad sent. Nah, we were nope. thinking too too smart. We were, we were trying to Da Vinci code it. And it yeah, and that. you know what? This wasn't on Dan Brown's level. <laughs> Although Dan Brown likes this book. He he wrote a oh. blurb for it, I believe. Oh, <laughs> You're better than this, Dan. Is it? <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> Rachel... I never thought I'd cheer for him, but... <laughs> Here you go. Here I am. <laughs> Rachel and Paul go... And McKay. I'll go... McCoy. Oh, McCoy. So, um, has it been... Have I been saying McKay the whole time? Uh, yeah. That's okay, though. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> Oh, no. First, the doctor gets killed, and there's, like, an altercation at the church between Suzanne and Christian Bale, and um, the, the chuckle, fit fucks. chuckle fucks overhear it, but, and then they, like, all, there's another chase, and some people almost get got, and nothing comes out of it, but Suzanne but, now knows that Christian Bale is alive. But also, like, the weird thing about this is that, so, there's a shootout in this church, mm-hmm. and... I guess when someone comes to investigate, it's the monks in charge of this church, yep. in charge of this abbey, I guess, and they find the dead body, and then they find two unconscious Americans, and then they don't call the police? Like, they're just like, oh, yeah, the monks will take care of it. Like, the monks came, the monks, like, saw, dug into your pockets, saw your room key, and came to the hotel to report that you were unconscious in their abbey. I was like, but why didn't? Why didn't they call the police to say there were two unconscious people in their act? <laughs> and a dead person. <laughs> and a dead person. What? There's some shady shit going on at that abbey. Like, uh, they're mu- yeah, they did not want the cops involved. <laughs> they were like, here, come take care of your own. Like, we'll take care of our own. You take care of your own. They were like, a dead body. This will be perfect for our dark arts. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go in the basement. <laughs> well, I looked a gift dead body in the mouth. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, so uh, everybody, everybody essentially goes off to Castle Loring at various points. So for Suzanne, different reasons. For different hey, reasons. They Suzanne returns to Castle Loring because that's where she goes. That's her place. That's her um, home. That's her home. And she and Loring have a discussion about how Suzanne is going to inherit everything. Well, not everything, but um, his membership in the fancy art club. The, the art club consisting of nine rich people and their, their hired Acquisitors. help. Acquisitors. The Acquisitors go and find this art and then the fancy rich people show it off to each other. And um, it's supposed to be all civilized. Like, they're, they're getting really concerned because of all the killings that are doing. But it's supposed to be a civilized yeah. thing for civilized rich people. So Suzanne's going to get, like, the castle and some money and the art collection and his... Uh, membership 
and then like he has a bunch of other money for his actual biological children um and then monica and her father show up <laughs> and first off there's like all this tension between suzanne and monica because they both want to fuck because, christian and, have and they're two christian. women and they're two women and also suzanne is like Oh my gosh, Monica is just gonna fucking shit her pants when she finds out that I'm gonna be on her level. And I'm like, okay, you're not though, because this rich man is definitely not giving you that much money compared to his actual kids. Like, right. like you're gonna have money, but like, I guarantee you, if this had continued, if Monica and Suzanne, if there was a sequel that was just like Monica and Suzanne, <laughs> like, the Monica and Suzanne show, right? Dealing, like, trying to out art each other. Like, Monica would not give two shits that Suzanne owned one castle. Because Monica definitely owns, like, several castles. Like, yeah, yeah. there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> but Suzanne's very like, haha, fuck you, Monica. Monica and her dad are like, what's the deal? And Loring's like, hey, here's the deal. I've actually had the Amber Room this whole fucking time. It's in my basement. Come check it out. It's very cool. It's very sparkly. Um, we've been murdering people to keep people from finding out that the Amber Room is in my fucking basement. Um, it's in my man cave. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> I, I just come down here and look at it. And I just myself. come down here and sit with the sparkles <laughs> for a while. Like, what the... F <laughs> Art collection is so fucking stupid. I'm sorry. It is but very, like, bizarre to me to want to have something but keep it secret from everyone. Yes. Yes. Like... Maybe I mean, I get wanting, wanting type, art to have, like, nice things in your house, but, like, I don't know. There's a limit. Like, there's a limit. I, I, you, it's whatever. I don't know. Maybe we don't have enough money to want to be secret about the things we own, though. Yeah. Right. Like, so <laughs> So he has this fancy, sparkly room that no one can <laughs> visit. And he's like, I've killed everyone else who has even gotten close to thinking that I have this. And except, they're like, except... For all of the workers that he had put it together in the first place. Yes. And he's like, they were fine. I trusted them. I'm like. They're loyal to me. Okay. Well, what? Like, it seems, it seems that either, again, it's an all or nothing thing. <laughs> either you're like, I can't trust anyone to even come close to sniffing out the secret. I, secret. I must uh -huh. murder them all. Or you're like, eh, it's fine. They probably won't figure it out. These yeah. guys seem loyal. It's cool. Like you can't... And no one can figure out how to get into this part of my house. So. It's in his house. Just don't let people in it. Like, I don't understand. Yeah. It's like... in, like, a room that you have to, like, it only recognizes two people's voices. And they change the password every week. And you go downstairs. And then it's, like, hidden inside of another room that he built inside the secret room. Right. And it's, like, he's, he's sitting there, like, I had to murder everyone so no one found out I had the Amber Room. Except for, like, these 50 people. Except for these 50 people. And also, <laughs> like, you know how else you could have made sure they don't find out about the Amber Room? Just don't show them the fucking Amber Room. Like, yeah. what? <laughs> I don't know. It was, like, some weird, like, trying to be a gentleman about all these killings. He's like, the murders must stop. Here's why. <laughs> so he, like, he, well, he says the murders must stop. And he takes them to the Amber Room. And is like, I've had the Amber Room the whole time. Please stop sending Christian to look for it because he's, like, digging up all this stuff and it's making us have to murder more people. Yes. Um, and they're like, okay, cool, cool, cool. What's her face? Monica. She's Monica's, tough. like, tries to, like, kind of be in control because she's supposed to be in charge of the membership for their family now. Like, her dad gave it to her. Mm -hmm. um, so she's trying to act like she's, like, in control. She's like, well, we'll decide if we're going to tell people in the club about this or not. We'll let you know. Um, and they... Which, like, they keep all their other secrets. Why would he care if the people in the club knew? Right. I don't understand that. Right. Well, I mean, I guess she kind of figured he might because he hasn't fucking told them for 50 years. Yeah, but, like, why would he hide that? They're, they're a group of basically art thieves. Right. Wouldn't that be, nothing like... nothing makes sense. <laughs> yeah, like, wouldn't that be just, like, just such a feather day. in your cap? They'd be like, right. look, I have the greatest art of all time I thieved. It's you an entire fucking sparkly room. Like... Yeah. What could oh be better? <laughs> so, um, Su so they give the, the Suzanne and and um, Loring give Monica and her father like some fancy bronze plates that they had been like kind of sparring over. Like C Christian and Suzanne had been like trying to find earlier, um, and they're like, here, here's like a console, uh, like 
consolation prize because we're going to keep the amber room because it's like been in our family and whatever and you guys can have these and everything will be cool um and suzanne put a fucking bomb in those so they fly as they fly back to their <laughs> palace or whatever their plane just blows up including two pilots who did absolutely nothing yep just murdering innocents just murdering now. everyone it's fine Ugh. so that resolves the monica of it all um yep yep they just pff, didn't matter they're dead they're dead now yep. <laughs> they're dead and they didn't matter um christian shows up and is skulking about and overhears that monica and um her father have been murdered killed whatever and he's like oh fuck guess i'm a rogue agent now guess i get to kill whoever i want <laughs> here i go killing again here comes christian so uh in the meantime rachel paul and mccoy all show up and they're mccoy is like hey loring i think you have the amber room and if you don't give me tons of money i'm gonna blab to the press and the chuckle fucks are so <laughs> fucking stupid they can't figure out that this is like a bluff to see what Loring knows. So they're like, we're not involved. We're a judge. We're a lawyer. We don't want to do illegal things. And I'm like, y'all chill, chill the fuck out. Be more cool. Like, come on. <laughs> like act like someone has they offered you weed so before. Please dorky. calm out. So dorky. They're so dumb. Oh my God. So McCoy is like, so they, they go to their room and, um, start, and fuck. And well, they get ready to fuck, but then McCoy interrupts them and is like, "Hey, you guys fucking? Hey, you guys fucking? Also, here's my whole plan. <laughs> I was just doing that to try to get info about the Amber Room because I think he has it. And you guys kind of blew it a little bit, but it's fine. We'll deal. Then everybody goes back to their rooms to fuck. Uh, to fuck. Paul and <laughs> and Rachel fuck. They have a whole conversation about how everything in their divorce was Rachel's fault because yep. <sighs> she got promoted to being a judge and started like getting high and mighty and thinking because she was like so cool. And women can't have careers and families. And Paul <laughs> did absolutely nothing wrong. Um, nope. Hashtag Paul did nothing wrong. Paul did nothing wrong. Here's the thing. I want to <laughs> enter into evidence for the court. <laughs> this, this quote regarding exhibit a exhibit a let me get it real quick let me find it okay so i want to enter enter into evidence this example of their um because because essentially what they claim is the reason for the divorce what what rachel claims is the reason for their divorce is that they argued all the time and Mm -hmm. they just couldn't live together because they fought so much but they both still have feelings for each other but they just can't live together because they fought so much this is an example of what they fought about. According, this is from Paul's perspective. He had never been much of a churchgoer. It wasn't that he didn't believe. It was just that admiring real human endeavor re- regarding art, that is what he's talking about, seemed more satisfying than pondering some omnipotent being. Rachel that sounds was the, like he's not religious. So it sounds like he's not religious. Rachel was the same way. He often wondered if their shared lackadaisical attitude toward religion affected Marla and Brent, their kids. Maybe the children needed exposure, he once argued, But Rachel had disagreed. Let them make up their own minds in their own time. She was staunchly anti-religion. Just one more of their debates. So, (laughs) so what this sounds like to me as an outside uh, onlooker is that neither of them is particularly interested in religion because he's not into church and doesn't want to go to church. And doesn't believe in God. And doesn't believe in God. (laughs) But Rachel, but he thinks, that they should do it just to appeal to like some societal norm or something. Yes. And then Rachel is like, that seems dumb. And then he argued with her about it, even though they're basically on the same page. Yes. I don't understand that. They're both, they're like, okay, we've both come to a point in our life where, uh, you know, we don't find that this is important aspect of our family. Um, but we should definitely force it on our children. Right. So, Rachel definitely Why? seems like what the end? sane one in that, like, discussion, right? Like, it's yes. like, neither of us believe in this thing. Or, like, I, to be fair, I think it's implying that he believes in God but just doesn't want to do the religion thing. Right. But, like, why would you why would you have your kids do it then? Like, I don't understand. I don't... Their kids are, like, what, four and six or something? Uh, six, like... and, six and eight, I think. Maybe. Yeah, somewhere, something like that. A two-year gap. Like, you're going to have to go with them. Right. You can't just You can't just them. leave them at the church. 
The reason they got divorced was because they just felt like it, and the uh, the author they didn't want to bother with counseling. The author wanted to make a point about how divorce is bad. That's pretty much yeah. it, because yeah. um, that comes up several times in this book. Um. Okay. So they fuck. Um. And then Paul like goes wandering through the house. He just gets up in the middle of the night. He just gets like, up. Go for one. And runs into McCoy. And then they they both just find the Amber Room. <laughs> No, yeah, he's like, so they find this open door, and they're like, well, it wouldn't be open if he didn't want us to go through it. Right. So they go through the door, and they find all of the secret art in the Amber Room. It's like, like okay, homie, okay. you should have locked I, that door. <laughs> what the fuck? You had this fancy lock on it. Which, like, but, like, there's the arrogance of you're staying in someone else's house, and just be like, well, if they didn't want us to snoop, they would have put everything under lock and key. So I'm just going to go through anything that I see. I think probably, I, I will give it the benefit of this doubt. I think probably that was meant a little bit more cheekily that they're like, because they are, because McCoy, mm-hmm. McCoy wants to find the Amber Room, right? Like he right. wants to snoop. That's why he's up and about. Yeah. I think they were probably trying to be like funny about it with that. Mm. But it's it definitely funny. fucking stupid on Loring's part. Like, yes. Um, also, he's not very good at keeping a secret. <laughs> that's why they had to keep killing people. Uh, so, so I just hate killing, but I also hate I also, keeping my secret. I also like to share. Um, <laughs> so, Loring finds them. This is where mm-hmm. all the everything starts to break bad. So, there's a lot of shit going on. Yes. Loring finds them in the room, admiring his amber, admiring room. the sparkles. Um, meanwhile, Christian kills Suzanne right first. Like Shoots he's her in. Well, he go no first he. Oh, um, first he goes to rape Rachel on Rachel. Yes, he goes yes. to rape Rachel, and then um, which wow, Rachel this is when he says she has an inviting crotch. Yes, which cool. Okay. <laughs> um, Rachel screams and Suzanne overhears it, mm-hmm. and like comes to check out what's going on, and then. There's a confrontation between Christian and Suzanne elsewhere, and Suzanne get, gets got. Yeah, he just shoots her in the forehead twice. And says this is for Monica. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. cool. I guess you cared about Monica. Cool. I don't know, dude. What else? Like- <laughs> um, and then he goes back to trying to rape Rachel. Uh, Loring... Who he's, like, beaten up to the point where she thinks he's Paul. Yeah. Like, and she's so she's, like, like moaning and in- supposed to be enjoying it. I think Which, he, I think she's coming because he punches her when he chases after Suzanne, like to knock mm-hmm. her out. So I think yes. she's just like unconscious and is like coming back to consciousness mm-hmm. and thinks it's Paul. I think is the situation. Okay, because it sounded to me like he was trying to make it sound like she was enjoying it, which I was like, okay, if you're going to write a scene where someone is violating a woman in one of the worst possible, the worst possible way, like don't don't justify it like that, like. <laughs> I don't didn't read try it as, and make it. I didn't read it as justification. I read it more as just because when Paul, spoiler, Paul comes into the scene and she's saying he gets Paul, his ass kicked. He's like, oh fuck, she's like crying out for me. So I think mm-hmm. it was more like. I don't think he was trying to say that she was into it, really. Yeah, I, think, I guess it was just like a weird I think, choice. And I, I know we was... were inside Christian's mm-hmm. mind at that point, so it was supposed to be like gross sociopath like train of thought, mm-hmm. but I, I don't know. Dude, yeah, but... it was it was I mean any sort of rape scene is automatically very uncomfortable, but yeah, especially when you're in the mind of the rapist. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. cool cool. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, Paul as mentioned gets away from Loring Loring shoots McCoy, but then Loring dies somehow. McCoy takes a bullet. McCoy takes a bullet for Mr. Chucklefuck. Because <laughs> it's his best friend. They are not that close. <laughs> he's just like, all right, now he's got a gun, so I'm going to plan to take the bullet that he's going to shoot, and you run and get Rachel and get out. Like, he's willing to, like, yeah. just die here because he found the Amber Room. McCoy, there's a lot to get into with <laughs> McCoy. McCoy has many depths. McCoy is a very deep character. Um, by which I mean he's not at all. He just does whatever the plot he, Yeah, he's just basically like the author's way to continue the plot. All right. 
So McCoy takes a bullet, and I think who kills Loring? Does McCoy kill Loring? McCoy chokes. Oh, he chokes him. McCoy chokes him. McCoy (laughs) chokes him to death after being shot. And then the author's like, and then McCoy like fell into the darkness. So you're supposed to think he's dead, but then in the next scene, he's just like walking around like, ah, my my shoulder hurts. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) Um, So Paul runs in, sees Rachel getting. uh, Well, I don't. I don't know if it's clear if. I mean, I guess it doesn't super matter if she's like if he's in the process of being about to rape her or he had no pants or underwear on Mm -hmm. because she's like, I woke up and there was this like guy naked from the waist down. Okay. And I mean, I I would say it doesn't matter. It's pretty much terrible no matter what, but I would think Mm -hmm. that both Rachel and Paul would care because um, they mentioned several times stuff about like how Paul is worried that she's attracted to another man and doesn't want her to sleep with other men. And then also like, Christian has that thought a couple times where he's like, ooh, she hasn't fucked anyone since her husband. She's practically a virgin. She's thirsty for... Oh, yeah, that was a weird thing. It definitely seems like the guys in this universe are very into that idea, so I Mm. I don't know. It's... um, But then at the end of the book, they were like, and we never talked about that night again. Oh, that's not healthy. (laughs) Well... You both almost died several times. I mean, maybe they shouldn't talk about it with each other, but maybe talk to a therapist. (laughs) Yeah, to someone, at least. Jesus. Um, so, So Paul pulls Christian off of Rachel. They get in a fist fight. Paul almost dies. Rachel picks up a gun and shoots Christian. Christian 11 dies. 11 billion 11 times. billion times. McCoy comes back in and is like, good job, guys. Um, Let's go, gang. <laughs> epilogue. They give the Amber Room back to Mother Russia. And... <laughs> Rachel and, and Paul get remarried because that's what I was worried about with this whole fucking book. In the in the Russian Orthodox Church, which they were like, no, we don't we don't believe in divorce, and they're like, no, 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 we were married to each other, and now we're getting remarried. And so the like, church was oh, like, nah, cool, that's cool. fine. Um, cool. Also, Rachel gives up her job as a judge because she doesn't want it to interfere with her relationship anymore. Real cool, real cool. Even though she just won a reelection, and and. In the final scene of this book, they exhume her father um, and bring his body to his his homeland of Belarus. Minsk. Mi- Minsk. Oh, I thought they went to Minsk. I don't know. Belarus. Let's say Belarus. Where 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 was it? Mi- Minsk. Is, How do you say is that? Is Minsk in Belarus? Where's Minsk? It is. It's the capital of Belarus. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah. So both. I learned something today. Okay. So they take his body back to his motherland of Belarus and um, rebury him there as he wished. They also exhume her dead mom and bury her there, even though she's not from Belarus and probably didn't want to be buried there. And she's been dead of cancer for 25 years. But, you know, her husband wanted to be buried there and she's got to be buried with her husband, I guess. This book sucks in terms of gender politics. I hated it yep. so much. It was very bad. It was, even for being written in 2003, was atrocious. It was, and also, I've mentioned a couple times the boobs of it all. Um, every, you know, like the, so the like, impressive. the thing that goes around on Twitter every so often where it's like, oh, uh, this is how men write women. And it's like, oh, she mm-hmm. breasted breastily towards him and that sort of thing. Like, that was this book. I know 100% legit. every single female character's cup size. Not actually their cup size, but I know every single female character's, like, shape, how big their boobs are, if their boobs resemble pyramids, when, how many, like... Yep. I Why? I don't need it. I don't need it in my life. I don't need it. I say this as someone who likes boobs very much. I don't... This was so... Uh, I, uh, like, every it's time such, a female like, character was described... weird points, like... I think the worst one was a boy of about 12 scampered toward the stall. His young eyes scanned her breasts. Her smile broadened. Lead the way. Men of all ages were so easy to manipulate. Cool. Ew. Cool. Ew. <laughs> Why I hate it. I hated everything about this book. Was there anything you didn't hate about this book? What was your silver lining? <laughs> so my silver lining <laughs> was that I, I actually did have a silver lining. I really liked the idea of there being, like, the secret yes. society of people who went around and stole art, and they had, like, acquisitors that battled with each other. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's what I want. I want a book. This is also my rather be reading, so someone write this book. Yeah. I'd rather be reading a book 
where there are two characters who are art acquisitors for these rich shady people and as they go around like indiana jonesing their life they meet each other and fall in love but you know they're rivals so yeah cross lovers kind of thing i want that book i'd be down for that i i liked that I aspect li- again i also like that aspect that was gonna be my silver lining too was that i think that that idea cool 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 mm-hmm. a lot of fun also, that stuff was, I believe, the majority of this book. This book was primarily from the perspectives of Suzanne and Christian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know why they had why to have the, the chuckle, chuckle fucks, fucks at all. <laughs> what were like, they why doing? were they on the back of the book? It, like, <sighs> I think it was it was because the two um, inquisitors like were kind of morally ambiguous at best, straight mm-hmm. up evil at worst. But that's awesome to read about. Right. But so I think that. Except for the rape. That's not Yeah, awesome the rape wasn't about, so guys. cool. Um, I think that. And the murdering women after just like having sex with them. I think that. That's yes, also not, not great. Cool. Um, Portrayal women, period. This yes. Not cool. But I think that like the author was like, oh, I have this cool idea for this like secret society that like is trying to find these like hidden things and they, they like. Uh, compete with each other and there's all this sexual tension and then he was mm-hmm, like oh mm-hmm. but like they're gonna have to do evil stuff i have to have some like morally good characters i'll just throw in this lawyer and judge who are divorced and yeah like for no fucking reason it was terrible it was stupid now see if the two inquisitors used to be married and then divorced yes that would be good that would be good there, oh god it was it was just there was there's a book in here that could be really good but it's but it's hidden not. between layers of weird really shit stuff really shit stuff <laughs> um who did you most relate to oh god i forgot i had to do something about this um because the answer really is no one but let me think you go first and i'll think because i totally forgot I th- about this segment think, like of the nobody but probably mccoy i guess because mm-hmm. he's McCoy's a good one I, and here's why i think because he's the only one who's not kind of like involved in these sexual politics and weirdness that is going on mm-hmm. in all of this like um even like all of the characters that are involved in the hunt for this are also involved in these weird fucking um like fucking issues you know like <laughs> christian has this weird stupid love triangle going on and then the chuckle fucks are trying to figure out if they want to get back together or not McCoy mm-hmm, is just mm-hmm. there for some treasure. <laughs> That's all McCoy yeah, wants. McCoy- He's like, his motivation is very clear. He get-go. just wants treasure and like, he wants to not go to jail for fraud. Like <laughs> That's pretty yeah, much yeah. his two things. And I mean, if I was in a situation where I could get some treasure or go to jail for fraud, that's also what I would pick would be the treasure. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Him, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I would go with McCoy, too, just because he is also, like, I like that there's this part of him where he's like, I'm going to pretend like I don't know a lot mm-hmm. of stuff so that people will like me. And unfortunately, that is something I do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all coming out. I know. Guys, you know, it's really hard being a smart woman. <laughs> <laughs> just like uh. McCoy. <laughs> Just like McCoy, it's just this intel- strong, intelligent woman who feels like he has to act dumber than she is because he, she, she won't be accepted by society. Yep, that's it. Uh, oh, and I meant like he slash she. I wasn't like trying to make a gross he she. Like, yeah, no, I Mrs. got it. Doubtfire joke. Okay, good. <laughs> just to make sure everyone got that. That's good. Always, always good to clarify uh, these things. Yep. <laughs> Um, okay, so what would you rather be reading then? Because I, I have another one, but I want to hear yours too. Um, I really don't have one is the thing, because, like, we've talked, I think we've talked about this before. This is such a genre that I just don't like. Like, I don't care. I yeah, don't want to read more of it. I haven't read much more of it. Like, I don't, you guys know. Like, I, adventure novels I, in general, or like? Like, thriller, I think. Thriller, okay. Thriller. There's a lot of stuff going on in this that I don't like, and I think that I've kind of burned any, like, rather be reading that I have that actually relates to this book. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So, I don't know. That new <laughs> Naomi Novik book looks good. Kind of want to read that. Mm-hmm, <laughs> Doesn't mm-hmm. have shit all to do with this book, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I, uh, I'm also in a position where I was like, I really want to be 
well, you know, because I texted you. I'm I'm in the middle of reading Sarah J. Moss's Throne of Glass mm-hmm, series mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. now, and I just finished Queen of Shadows the day before I had to read this yep. book, and I was like, I this might I might just like not read the book at all and just keep reading the Throne of Glass series because wow, Queen of Shadows was amazing. Um, but that is not really my rather be reading. My rather be reading. I really enjoy books that um have like a heist Mm -hmm. narrative to them or like I like books about thieves a lot and so one that I really like that I haven't read for a couple years now but um I would like to return to the series is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson Mm, yeah um it's a bit of a chunkster but it's really good it and it sounds kind of silly like the the magical system is that people drink um vials of different metals to gain different abilities um, and most people only have an affinity for one type of metal slash ability, but some, the Mistborn, can drink any metal and have any of the abilities. And um, it's very good. Mm. There was thieving, there is heisting, there is a plot. Um, and I mean, like, not just a plot of a book, but like a right, plot right. to do something like that. A plot most treacherous, or. Maybe yes, not. yes, thank you. Um, um, yeah. I'll throw out some. You kind of took us in thieves' direction. I'll throw out um, mm-hmm. Six of Crows. Yeah, Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Um, and I haven't read the sequel yet, and I need to do that. Oh, you I know, I need to get on it. So it. it's even better than Six of Crows, if you can imagine. I just read it like a couple months ago. Mm. So I'll, mm. I'll throw that out. That'll be my my official one. Yes, <laughs> yes. Cool. All right. Um, so that pretty much ra- much wraps us up for this fortnight. Next Thank fortnight, God. we actually have a submission. Which, yes. as you all know, is a submission from a slummer. Um, <laughs> so they have suggested that we read The Shadow Year by Hannah Rich- Richel. Um, and they describe it as, It is a book about awful people doing awful things, and the only slightly redeeming characters get absolutely shafted. Um, so that's going to be our next, our next pick. Yes. We will be reading that next fortnight. So come on by if you would like to hear our coverage on uh, The Shadow Year. Yeah, if you want to, you can look up the synopsis on Goodreads. We're not reading it. It's long. Oh, yeah. It's like three paragraphs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cool. Adult historical fiction. <laughs> but thank you thank you for the submission. We really appreciate it. Yes, thank it. you for the submission. We don't have, like, a name to thank specifically. Because we only have their email address, and we don't want to, like, put that on blast. But um, But you know who you are. Thank you. <laughs> all right cool in the meantime if you oh shit what can we say for this one um, if you'd like to describe your breasts no just... <laughs> if you'd like to describe your breasts please don't involve please, us with if, that if you have ever seen breasts shaped like pyramids <laughs> please let us know <laughs> i don't know i think that's kind of a schrodinger's cat thing i'd rather that that particular cat stay both alive and dead uh <laughs> Um, no, yeah, you can, you can contact us on Twitter at hate recast, or if you have your own submission that you would like to uh, suggest we read, you can email us, um, hate recast at gmail.com. I suppose you could also send that on Twitter, but I, I feel like some people are a little bit more nervous about linking their name to things that they aggressively don't, they like. don't like. <laughs> um, so, you know, whatever you're comfortable Understandable. with Understandable. Uh, as always, thank you to Ben Cope for the use of our theme song. You can check out his YouTube channel in our show notes below. Mm-hmm. And we are on all of your favorite podcasting aggregating things. Yep. Platforms. Yep. That's the word. That's we are on all of the best podcast aggregating platforms. So if you have not yet subscribed to us and you would like to, you should do that on whatever it is you're using. Um, if it does happen to be iTunes, we would love it if you could give us a five-star review because it does help other people find us and enjoy our content as well. Um, and also, just tell people about us. Yeah. That'd be awesome. We would love that. Let them know. Share the good word. Um, and the hate. I've got a quote. I've got one, too. What's yours? It's the one that, because <laughs> we never actually said what it was, the one that upset both of us at 16 percent oh yeah yeah in the words what's this author's name something steve fucking barry in the words of steve barry 
How had men once believed such obesity attractive? But apparently they had, since they found the need to fantasize that their gods desired such a butterball. Yeah, butterball, wow. <laughs> First of all, like, that's the insult you're going to go with? Like, you have such vehemence that you're just going to be like, butterball. butterball. How do you say that angrily? <laughs> oh, oh, man. That's fine. Mine was, I think I'm glad I fucked you. I didn't understand that one. I because he was she was like are you he was like I could have like, killed would you, you have or killed something? me if like I I tried to stand in if your I way. didn't sleep with you if I didn't sleep with you no I yeah. thought it was just if I stood in your way okay whatever it doesn't matter it was a dog either know. way. <laughs> Welcome back, literary slummers, to another episode of Hate Read. I'm one of your hosts. Oh, no, we don't say one of your hosts on this one. <laughs> and I'm yes, another of your hosts, Anna. <laughs> do we say one of your hosts on no, this one? No, I'm, you just say I'm M. Yep, you're right. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I'm M. <laughs> I'm not doing the whole thing again. I know, it's just funny. <laughs> oh. And I'm Anna. <laughs> okay (laughs) i can't stop laughing now okay you've turned into me i know it's terrible all right every fortnight here on hate read one of us challenges the other (laughs) no that was correct i did not stumble over my words every fortnight here on hate read one of us challenges the other to read a book that we (laughs) we're doing great we're doing real good. So good. It's this book, man. It haunted me. 